The area of a disk, more commonly called the area of a circle, of radius r is equal to pi r2. Here the symbol pi denotes the constant ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter or of the area of a circle to the square of its radius. Since the area of a regular polygon is half its perimeter times its apothem, and the regular polygon approaches a circle as the number of sides increase, the area of a disk is half its circumference times its radius. History Modern mathematics can obtain the area using the methods of integral calculus or its more sophisticated offspring, real analysis. However, the area of circles was studied by the ancient Greeks. Eudoxus of Cnidus in the 5th century BC had found that the areas of circles are proportional to their radius squared. The great mathematician Archimedes used the tools of Euclidean geometry to show that the area inside a circle is equal to that of a right triangle, whose base has the length of the circle's circumference and whose height equals the circle's radius in his book Measurement of a Circle. The circumference is 2 pi r, and the area of a triangle is half the base times the height, yielding the area pi r2 for the disk. Prior to Archimedes, Hippocrates of Chios was the first to show that the area of a disk is proportional to the square of its diameter, as part of his quadrature of the loon of Hippocrates, but did not identify the constant of proportionality. Using polygons, the area of a regular polygon is half its perimeter times the apothem. As the number of sides of the regular polygon increases, the polygon tends to a circle, and the apothem tends to the radius. This suggests that the area of a circle is half its circumference times the radius. Archimedes's Proof Following Archimedes, compare a circle to a right triangle whose base has the length of the circle's circumference and whose height equals the circle's radius. If the area of the circle is not equal to that of the triangle, then it must be either greater or less. We eliminate each of these by contradiction, leaving equality as the only possibility. We use regular polygons in the same way. Not greater suppose the circle area, C, may be greater than the triangle area, T equals 1 half CR. Let E denote the excess amount. Inscribe a square in the circle, so that its four corners lie on the circle. Between the square and the circle are four segments. If the total area of those gaps, G4, is greater than E, split each arc in half. This makes the inscribed square into an inscribed octagon, and produces eight segments with a smaller total gap, G8. Continue splitting until the total gap area, Gn, is less than E. Now the area of the inscribed polygon, Pn equals C minus Gn, must be greater than that of the triangle. But this forces a contradiction, as follows. Draw a perpendicular from the center to the midpoint of a side of the polygon, its length, h, is less than the circle radius. Also, let each side of the polygon have length s, then the sum of the sides, ns, is less than the circle circumference. The polygon area consists of n equal triangles with height h and base s, thus equals 1 half nhs. But since h less than r and ns less than c, the polygon area must be less than the triangle area, 1 half cr, a contradiction. Therefore our supposition that c might be greater than t must be wrong. Not less suppose the circle area may be less than the triangle area. Let d denote the deficit amount. Circumscribe a square, so that the midpoint of each edge lies on the circle. If the total area gap between the square and the circle, G4, is greater than D, slice off the corners with circle tangents to make a circumscribed octagon, and continue slicing until the gap area is less than D. The area of the polygon, Pn, must be less than T. This, too, forces a contradiction. 4. A perpendicular to the midpoint of each polygon side is a radius of length r. And since the total side length is greater than the circumference, the polygon consists of n identical triangles with total area greater than t. Again we have a contradiction, so our supposition that c might be less than t must be wrong as well. 
Therefore it must be the case that the area of the circle is precisely the same as the area of the triangle. This concludes the proof. Rearrangement proof. Following Sato Moshin and Leonardo da Vinci, we can use inscribed regular polygons in a different way. Suppose we inscribe a hexagon. Cut the hexagon into six triangles by splitting it from the center. Two opposite triangles both touch two common diameters, slide them along one so the radial edges are adjacent. They now form a parallelogram, with the hexagon size making two opposite edges, one of which is the base. Two radial edges form slanted sides, and the height is h. In fact, we can assemble all the triangles into one big parallelogram by putting successive pairs next to each other. The same is true if we increase to eight sides and so on. For a polygon with two n sides, the parallelogram will have a base of length nights and a height h. As the number of sides increases, the length of the parallelogram base approaches half the circle circumference, and its height approaches the circle radius. In the limit, the parallelogram becomes a rectangle with width pi r and height r. Onion proof. Using calculus, we can sum the area incrementally, partitioning the disk into thin concentric rings like the layers of an onion. This is the method of shell integration in two dimensions. For an infinitesimally thin ring of the onion of radius t, the accumulated area is 2 pi t dt. The circumferential length of the ring times its infinitesimal width. This gives an elementary integral for a disk of radius r. It is rigorously justified by the multivariate substitution rule in polar coordinates. Namely, the area is given by a double integral of the constant function 1 over the circle itself. If c denotes the circle, then the double integral can be computed in polar coordinates as follows which is the same result as obtained above. Triangle proof. Similar to the onion proof outlined above, we could exploit calculus in a different way in order to arrive at the formula for the area of a circle. In this case, we imagine dividing up a circle into triangles, each with a height equal to the circle's radius and a base that is infinitesimally small. The area of each of these triangles is equal to one half asterisk r asterisk d. By summing up all of the areas of these triangles, we arrive at the formula for the circle's area. It too can be justified by a double integral of the constant function 1 over the circle by reversing the order of integration and using a change of variables in the above iterated integral. Making the substitution converts the integral to which is the same as the above result. Semicircle proof. Note that the area of a semicircle with radius r can be computed by the integral. By trigonometric substitution, we substitute using the trigonometric identity we can rewrite this as. Therefore, the area of a circle with radius r is equal to fast approximation. The calculations Archimedes used to approximate the area numerically were laborious, and he stopped with a polygon of 96 sides. A faster method uses ideas of Willebrod Snell, further developed by Christian Wiegens, described in Gerrit Sen and Verdandwein. Archimedes doubling method given a circle, let un be the perimeter of an inscribed regular n-gon, and let un be the perimeter of a circumscribed regular n-gon. Then un and un are lower and upper bounds for the circumference of the circle that become sharper and sharper as n increases and their average 2 is an especially good approximation to the circumference. To compute un and un for large n, Archimedes derived the following doubling formulae. Starting from a hexagon, Archimedes doubled n four times to get a 96 gon, which gave him a good approximation to the circumference of the circle. In modern notation, we can reproduce his computation as follows. For a unit circle, an inscribed hexagon has u6 equals 6, and a circumscribed hexagon has u6 equals 4 square root 3. 
Doubling seven times yields 2 approximates the circumference of the unit circle, which is 2 pi. So, 4 approximates by the last entry of the table has 355 113 as one of its best rational approximations, i.e., there is no better approximation among rational numbers with denominator up to 113. The number 355 113 is also an excellent approximation to pi, better than any other rational number with denominator less than 16604. The snell Wiegens refinement Snell proposed a tighter bound than Archimedes. This for n equals 48 gives a better approximation than Archimedes' method for n equals 768. Derivation of Archimedes' doubling formulae Let one side of an inscribed regular n-gon have length s n and touch the circle at points a and b. Let a be the point opposite a on the circle, so that a a is a diameter, and a a b is an inscribed triangle on a diameter. By Thales' theorem, this is a right triangle with right angle at B. Let the length of AB be CN, which we call the complement of SN, thus CN2 plus SN2 equals 2. Let C bisect the arc from A to B, and let C be the point opposite C on the circle. Thus the length of CA is S2N, the length of CA is C2N, and CCA is itself a right triangle on diameter C, C because C bisects the arc from A to B, C, C perpendicularly bisects the chord from A to B, say at P. Triangle C app is thus a right triangle, and is similar to CCA since they share the angle at C. Thus all three corresponding sides are in the same proportion, in particular, we have CA, C, C equals C, P, C A and app, C A equals C A, C, C. The center of the circle, O, bisects AA, so we also have triangle AP similar to AAB, with up half the length of AB. In terms of side lengths, this gives us in the first equation C, P is CO plus up, length R plus one half CN, and C, C is the diameter, 2R. For a unit circle we have the famous doubling equation of Ludolf van Soylen. If we now circumscribe a regular n-gon with side a, b, parallel to ab, then o a b and o a b are similar triangles, with a, b, ab equals o c, op. Call the circumscribed side s n, then this is s n, s n equals 1, 1 half c n. Thus we obtain call the inscribed perimeter n equals n s n, and the circumscribed perimeter n equals n s n. Then combining equations, we have so that this gives a geometric mean equation. We can also deduce all this gives a harmonic mean equation. Start approximation. When more efficient methods of finding areas are not available, we can resort to throwing darts. This Monte Carlo method uses the fact that if random samples are taken uniformly scattered across the surface of a square in which a disk resides, the proportion of samples that hit the disk approximates the ratio of the area of the disk to the area of the square. This should be considered a method of last resort for computing the area of a disk as it requires an enormous number of samples to get useful accuracy. An estimate good to 10 minus n requires about 100 n random samples. Finite rearrangement. We have seen that by partitioning the disk into an infinite number of pieces we can reassemble the pieces into a rectangle. A remarkable fact discovered relatively recently is that we can dissect the disk into a large but finite number of pieces and then reassemble the pieces into a square of equal area. This is called Tarshi's circle squaring problem. The nature of Lachkovich's proof is such that it proves the existence of such a partition but does not exhibit any particular partition. Generalizations. We can stretch a disk to form an ellipse. Because this stretch is a linear transformation of the plane, it has a distortion factor which will change the area but preserve ratios of areas. This observation can be used to compute the area of an arbitrary ellipse from the area of a unit circle. Consider the unit circle circumscribed by a square of side length 2. 
The transformation sends the circle to an ellipse by stretching or shrinking the horizontal and vertical diameters to the major and minor axes of the ellipse. The square gets sent to a rectangle circumscribing the ellipse. The ratio of the area of the circle to the square is pi 4, which means the ratio of the ellipse to the rectangle is also pi 4. Suppose A and B are the lengths of the major and minor axes of the ellipse. Since the area of the rectangle is ab, the area of the ellipse is pi ab 4. We can also consider analogous measurements in higher dimensions. For example, we may wish to find the volume inside a sphere. When we have a formula for the surface area, we can use the same kind of onion approach we used for the disk triangle method. This approach is a slight modification of onion proof. Consider unwrapping the concentric circles to straight strips. This will form a right angle triangle with r as its height and 2 pi r as its base. Finding the area of this triangle will give the area of circle the opposite and adjacent angles for this triangle are respectively in degrees 9.04306118.9569399 80.9569399 and in radians 0 0.1578311 Bibliography. Archimedes, Measurement of a Circle, in T. L. Heath, The Works of Archimedes, Dover, pp. 91-93, ISBN 9780486-42084, for check date values in. Date equals. Beckman, Petter, A History of Pi, Saint. Martins Griffin, ISBN 9780312381851. Gerrit Sen, J. Verdandween. Chapter 8. Polygons and Polyhedra, in H. Benker, Barkman, Flat, Conley, H. Gould, Fundamentals of Mathematics, Volume 2, Geometry, Mit Press, pp. 243-250, ISBN 9780-262-52094-2, Latkovich, Miklos, Equity Composability and Discrepancy, A Solution to Tarshi's Circle Squaring Problem, Journal für Dirain und Ange 1 to Mathematik 404, 77-117, Mr. 1037431, Longy, Serge, The Length of the Circle, Math, Encounters with High School Students, Springer Furlog, ISBN 978-0-387-961293-3, Smith, David Eugene, Mikami, Yoshio, A History of Japanese Mathematics, Chicago, Open Court Publishing, pp. 130-132, ISBN 9780-87548170-8. Thijser, M. Computational Physics, Cambridge University Press. 273, ISBN 9780521575881.